require accelerating change, and especially not bold accelerationism. We could reach the threshold level of techno juju to create transhuman intelligence by following the previous historical line, as shown here, and as the bold thesis of accelerationism implies, or we could reach the threshold by following a different line, a rougher line, one that proceeds faster or slower than his history would lead us to expect. We could reach the threshold following some totally weird trajectory <clears throat> that dips down and comes back. So long as you eventually get enough technology, you eventually get artificial intelligence or brain-computer interfaces or neurotechnology, and then the crystal ball cracks. So the event horizon does not require accelerating change, and a devastating criticism of Moore's law may not be a devastating criticism of Werner Vinge's original singularity thesis, which I've been calling the event horizon. The third school of singularity thought is the intelligence explosion, which goes back to the 1960s as w and was invented by the famous Bayesian mathematician I.J. Good and also pre-invented in the 1930s by the science fiction editor John Campbell. Mind has always been the source of technology. All the changes that occurred over the last 10,000 years were produced by constant human brains. 10,000 years ago, as today, our ancestors had a prefrontal cortex, visual cortex, limbic system, the same brain architecture as today. But now we're talking about using technology to improve intelligence. And that closes the loop. Suppose you had humans with brain-computer interfaces that augmented their intelligence. What might they do with their augmented intelligence? Play the stock market? Cure cancer? One good bet is that they would use their augmented minds to design the next generation of brain-computer interfaces. The smarter you are, the more intelligence you have at your disposal to make yourself even smarter. Minds making technology to improve minds is a positive feedback cycle. And this, stripped down to its bare essentials, is the core thesis of the intelligence explosion, that intelligence enhancement is a tipping point, like a triangle balanced on one corner. Once it tilts over even a little, gravity pulls it down the rest of the way. The most extreme version of this thesis is in artificial intelligence improving its own source code. If you try to do intelligence enhancement by genetic engineering, then it takes 18 years for the kids to grow up and help engineer the next generation. For humans with brain-computer interfaces to design the next generation of brain-computer interfaces might take 18 months. For an AI to rewrite its own source code might be 18 seconds. It's when we start talking about artificial intelligence that we, we start to see how large the intelligence explosion might be. Even if you consider only the hardware of the human brain as opposed to the software, you can see plenty of room for improvement. Human neurons spike an average of 20 times per second, and the fastest recorded neurons in biology spike 1,000 times per second, which is still less than a millionth of what a modern computer chip does. Similarly, neural axons transmit signals at less than 150 meters per second. One meter per second is more usual, and that's less than a millionth the speed of light. So it should be physically possible to uh, to have a brain that um, thinks at one million times the speed a human does without even shrinking it or cooling it. At that rate, you could do one year's worth of thinking every 31 physical seconds. So I should emphasize that this in particular is more of a thought experiment than a prediction. The main reason for discussing this is to illustrate that the human mind is not an upper bound. Just as a skyscraper is orders of magnitude taller, than a human, and a jet plane travels orders of magnitude faster than a human, you can have minds that think orders of magnitude faster or have orders of magnitude more computing power. There is nothing in the laws of physics against it. OK, so one widespread criticism is that we should not worry about any of this because AI has failed to make progress over the last few decades. Yes, I hear this a lot. Very amusing. It seems like uh, all known AIs today are dumber than a village idiot. And this is true. If you use the within-human scale of intelligence to look at AIs, then AIs today are dumber than the dumbest humans, just like every other animal on the planet. Um, and AIs have been dumber than a village idiot for quite some time now, so it's clear that AI has failed to make progress. 
But you shouldn't use the human scale of intelligence to judge AIs. It appears to me that AI has come a, quite a long way, that we have been creeping up the scale, though slowly, but to a human, it all falls off the cliff of the human scale and becomes dumber than a village idiot. And plus, of course, as soon as Rodney Brooks does something impressive, it's not AI anymore. So strictly steady progress in artificial intelligence from a human perspective might look something like this. <laughs> and that is not even taking recursive self-improvement or the intelligence explosion thesis into account. There's no threshold in, in that diagram where the human programmers stop improving the AI from the outside and the AI starts improving itself from the inside. If an AI is thinking a thousand times as fast as human programmers, shouldn't it prove itself faster than humans tinkering from outside? So maybe what we ought to see is something like this. And that may seem a bit silly, but if you were to look at the um, graph of, say, how much complexity there was on Earth, the graph would look a lot like that starting with the invention of human intelligence. So uh, if you think of that as an economic sort of graph, like what does the global economy look like once human intelligence comes along, it, it would probably look remarkably like that. This sort of thing is not unprecedented, it's just very impressive. So the bold claim of the intelligence explosion is minds making technology to improve minds is a positive feedback cycle which, once it gets started, rapidly surges upward and creates superintelligence. This sort of thing is the argument for why it would not be a good idea to wait until after we have human-level AI before we start thinking about the implications of the technology, and in particular about transhuman AI. So if we put the uh, bold claim of the intelligence explosion on a Moore's Law graph, it might look something like this. Note that this graph contradicts both strong accelerationism, because change isn't accelerating at a smooth pace, and also contradicts the strong event horizon, because we're making a prediction about what happens after the singularity. Um, and one, one, also, one often hears, well, there are physical limits to computation, so um, this can't continue forever. Well, according to our current models of physics, there are physical limits, but they're way the heck off the top of this graph. It's uh, way above the ceiling, I think, even. So another important point about this uh, graph of the intelligence explosion is what does that blue line represent? If the, um, in the intelligence explosion, the key threshold is criticality of recursive self-improvement. It's not enough to have an AI that improves itself a little. It has to be able to improve itself enough to significantly increase its ability to make further self-improvements, which sounds to me like a software issue, not a hardware issue. So there's the question of, can you predict that threshold using Moore's Law at all? Which, uh, in turn, brings up the issue of trying to calculate the arrival time of the singularity, which is a popular pastime among accelerationists. So let's go back to the event horizon graph. By far the most popular method for trying to time the singularity is to look at the brain, try to calculate how many operations per second it does, and then project Moore's law out to calculate when we'll have that much computing power. But this does not take into account the question of software. Jordy Rose of D-Wave Systems um, recently um, was kind enough to provide us with a startling il illustration of software progress versus hardware progress. Suppose you want to factor a 75-digit number. Would you rather have a 2007 supercomputer, IBM's Blue Gene L, running an algorithm from 1977, or a 1977 computer, an Apple II, running a 2007 algorithm? And Jordy Rose calculated that Blue Gene L, with, a, with 1977's algorithm, would take 10 years, and an Apple II with 2007's algorithm would take three years. In artificial intelligence, this sort of thing is harder to, to calculate and graph. AI breakthroughs usually let you do things that previously would have been outright impossible because you just had no clue how to do them. But I'll say that on anything except a very easy AI problem, I'd much rather have modern theory and an Apple II than 1970s theory and blue gene. Each conceptual breakthrough 
in AI drops the computing power necessary to achieve AI. At some point, 